how's everybody doing today? Hope you have had a great growing season. It's fall time now. Uh, most of you probably have our beds uh, already turned over. Today I'm going to prep my beds for my garlic today. But I want to do a little review on the Never Sink Iconoclast Tilter. I got it this spring. And there's two different tilters up there that I've seen. The Johnny's and the Never Sinks. And I went with the Never Sink after reading some reviews. Um, but mostly the reason I went for it was because it was 300 bucks cheaper than the Johnny's on the Dubois site that I use here in Canada. So I picked it up for 650 bucks, I think. Uh, that was in January, and now it's actually like 900 bucks. So I got pretty lucky on that. But I'll do a quick little walkthrough with this, show you how it works. And uh, I am right now just I'm pretty happy with it. It works great for, for what it is, and it does a great job. I'll just show you my beds here quickly. So I got four beds here I've got prepped. I've got my compost on top and I will tilt that in once we go through the walk with the with the tilter. So let's be clear with the tilter and a tiller. Two different things. Tiller will till your ground, you know, half a foot, foot into the ground and till everything up. A tilter is just a till thing you're composting the first few inches of your beds to make it nice, soft and loamy so it's easier to plant and it gets the nutrients right to the roots where you need it. So when I've got this, it came all in parts here. So it came, you know, this wasn't attached, that wasn't attached, these weren't attached. Um, but uh, Connor Crickmore, he has a YouTube channel, Never Sink Farms, and he has the instruction manual on there, a video actually, on how to put this thing together. Pretty straightforward, probably took me about 45 minutes to an hour at the most. And I was just kind of taking my time doing it. Uh, pretty straightforward. You have your bolts here bolts on to the back here with all your pieces here your handles and down here is the tilter part right here she just had some good use this summer got some grass stuck up into it but right now it's free spinning i don't have the drill on it but as you can tell it's a pretty straightforward simple machine on it here it has your brake handle here and that is to uh, turn your drill on and off, which I will show you here in a second to hook it up. It comes with this nice little strap here for helping carry around. Pretty straightforward. I find it's hard to carry, it's kind of awkward once you have the drill on, it's a bit heavier. Um, so you have to adjust the strap to your height. I find it kind of bangs in the back of your leg when you're carrying it. But I mean, for the most part, it's nice. Nice little feature to have. Now it also has this little feature here too, this handle here. You can loosen it up and you can tilt your handles here for when you're walking down your beds here. So you can tilt it if you're walking down this way, you can tilt the handles this way. So you walk in your, in your pathways and it works well for that. I find that this is a little sticky, hard to use. It takes a little bit of, uh, you really gotta turn it quite hard and push the button down, turn it to loosen it up. But I'm gonna leave it where it is. So I like the angle that it's on. Um, so the first few times I used it, it seemed to be come on stuck and kind of loosen up a bit. But other than that, it's nice. Works pretty good. I've kind of set it at that adjustment and I've left it. It's got your little flat pan there. So when you're walking down, it just flattens the beds out. And um, here, we'll flip this over real quick. Actually, we'll show you this side here. It has this piece here. So what happens here is when you put your drill onto the chuck here, you can push this up and lock your drill onto place. And nice little screw here. Lock into place, super easy function. It's great. And then down here as well, this is where the brake handle comes to, or the throttle strap, whatever you want to call it. That wraps around the throttle, which I'll show you in a minute here on the drill. So the tilter here uses a nice 18 volt drill. I'm just using a rigid one, but if you have like a DeWalt or a Makita, whatever drill you're using, it works out. I just have an 18 volt battery, but you can use up to a 20 volt battery on it. One thing I uh, didn't know about this is when I was using it, uh, my drill here has two speeds, one and two. I had it on speed number two, and the tilter does not work on speed number two. It'll spin for about two seconds and it stops, spin, stop. So I can figure it out. And one day I looked at my drill and I tried switching it to number one and it worked 
flawlessly after it was on speed number one. So what we'll do here, I'll put the drill down and we'll set it up here on the tilter so you can see that real quick. It's really easy to do. So what you do is you just get your chuck on your drill loosened right up. You pop it onto here. And then you lock it into place. So it's locked there nicely. Now what you do, you loosen your uh, drill, I guess I'll call it a drill block. You slip it right forward to the drill here. And you lock it into place here. And now your drill is in place and it's set to go. So the next thing I'll show you, I'll turn the turn it around quickly here and I'll show you how to attach the strap here to it. It's not too backlit here with the sun. The sun's pretty bright today. It's a beautiful fall day. So all you do is uh, you take your drill, you lift it up a little bit, you set it down and you have a little locking thing here. You just slip the rope through here. It's a little bit tricky because there's some teeth on the back of the locking thing here to lock your strap into place. But all you want to do is just lock it into place so it's just, just barely lock, touching the finger trigger here. So not to pull it to make the drill go. And you're just going to push that into place and lock it there. As well, you want to make sure that your drill is in the forward position. So when you're going with the tilter, it goes forward, it spins the teeth forward and not backwards. And as well, it's got this nice little foam piece here that looks like it's actually fallen off on me. That just protects the drill from hitting the metal. So I think I'm gonna have to glue this down and that hasn't lasted the season. So they might have to rethink on how to keep that on properly. But I guess I'll have to fix that this winter. <laughs> but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. What I'll do, we'll set the camera up over here and I'll show you a few passes with the tilter here. One thing first is these beds were new this year. I did my potatoes in most of these beds, corn and squash in some of these beds. So I broke ground with a broad fork. I flipped everything over with a pitchfork, get all the weeds out. And then the soil was fairly chunky still, but I topped it with some compost and I took the tilter through the chunky stuff. I was kind of using it like a tiller just to break the chunks up, but um, it did a pretty good job. But ideally you want a nice clean bed that's been worked already. And it's basically just a turn your compost in. So I'll show you that. These beds are gonna be beautiful to turn in right now for the fall. And the compost I'm using, I've got rabbit manure here for right, straight from the rabbit cages today. And I've got a whole bunch of cow manure here from the cow pile we have. There's cow, rabbit, chicken, straw, hay, everything that's broken down nicely there. All right, we'll get set this up and watch how it works. So you just set it down at the start of your bed. And I like to do two or three passes usually, just to make sure everything's worked in. So sometimes you gotta make sure the chuck's on real tight. This is hard to get done sometimes. Okay, that should do it. All right, so we're ready to go. Super easy, I'm putting no pressure on it. So my manure is a little chunkier, so I will do a few passes just to make sure it breaks it up and it gets worked right into the soil nicely. And this way you can shape your beds a bit more too as you're going down. And it's super easy. I'm barely putting any pressure on it. It's actually pulling itself down the beds. All right, so there you go. There's two passes. One, two down each side here. And here we go, it's tilting real nice. Look at that. I could probably do another pass here if I wanted to. I might do that. And usually what I'll do too, I'll come back with a rake quickly and just kind of level the beds out a bit. I need to get a proper rake that's the correct length. I'm just using a hard rake. Seems to do the job not too bad, but it'd be good to have one that's 30 inches long and just do one pass. Okay, I'll do this bed here for you guys as well so you can see it. Like I said, it's pretty awesome, it's a great tool. And you'll see how chunky some of this stuff is. It's chunkier than I like it to be because we have had some rain the past few weeks where I've been getting my compost from the cow manure pile and the, my compost pile is a little chunky. 
But this tool, as you can see, helps to tail fit and tail it a bit in. All right, here we go for the next bed. I love how fast and easy it is to use this tool. It has fed up my bed preps 100% speed wise. Get things done way faster. So with the bigger chunks, I sort of go a little slower over them. So it breaks up a bit. Sorry for the noise, we're right by the highway here. There's lots of traffic. So here we go back up again. And you just want to keep the angle so it kind of has the flat part down on the back. So there's one pass, here comes the other pass here. So doing the two passes, two to three passes is really nice. Really gets your beds tilted up nicely, softened up and worked in all that nice beautiful compost. Okay, so there's pass number two. I'm just gonna do on that side, I'll do one more this side. I might come back once more, just, just to make sure it's in nicely. Yeah, I'll do one more just, just to show you guys. And just show you how nice it tilts it in. And on the trigger too, for the, for the drill here, I'm really only using two fingers for it. You'd use one, because that's how easy it is to use. And look, taking my one hand off and just pulling it nicely. So it doesn't take any energy on your part to do any of this. Okay. So this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like after. Sorry for the shot of the camera. There we go, look, nice and done. So like I said, I'll probably take a rake just to smooth it out just a little bit. But this bed is prepped, ready to go. Hope we get some garlic in today. So I got these two beds here I'm gonna finish off and then we'll be ready to rock. So there you go guys, like, just a quick little review. Honestly, like I said, I haven't used a tilter before till, till this year and I'm not sure if the John, which is Johnny's is, like I'm sure it's pretty much straight the same type of deal. I don't think there's much things you can change on a tilter from different people making them. Basically all it is your teeth spinning and your drill on it and a brake handle just to spin it. But um, not sure if Johnny says more teeth on it, spins faster or how it works, but I'm sure they're all the same. But that's my quick little review on Connor Creek Moore from Never Sink Farms Tilter. Hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions that I maybe forgot or left out, um, please leave it in the comments and I'll answer them for sure on anything that I may have missed. Um, but like I said, it's straightforward, easy to put together, easy to use and uh, very user friendly and it does the job real quick like you just saw just the two beds these are about 45 foot beds in what two minutes so it's a great tool to speed up your process for your market garden okay guys hope you enjoyed that quick little review on the tilter thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel give it a thumbs up and share my videos around we'll see you out there and hope you have a great fall season